Joining us in the studio is Professor Julia Kirchheiner, an expert on personalized medicine. Now, we've known for so many years that people actually react differently to medication. How come we still do not have this personalized medicine? Uh, you say it, we have it already. And uh, clinicians, of course, take into account the different body mass index or gender or every factor. But the only thing is which we pharmacogenetics would add is to perform a genetic test before mm -hmm. giving the right dose to the patient. Do we have to fear that doctors in the future might just look at the genes and not at the patient itself? I don't hope they, they will forget to look at the patient himself. Why should they? I mean, it's just an additional tool you have uh, on factors which are invisible. Mm -hmm. So how will that actually proceed then in the future? We come up to the doctor and he'll say, well, that's your medication. But first we have to go for a genetic test. Well, not for every medication. You would never do a f genetic test for taking a drug for headache, for example. But for long-term drug therapies where the patients would like to know whether there will be responders or not, there it might be useful to perform a genetic test in order to better or to assure efficiency in the patients. And which other fields actually you're looking at? I mean, for the first uh, cancer therapy, you wouldn't like to lose time for treating a cancer patient and other long-term drug treatments like depression treatment where you like mm -hmm. to know whether the drug helps actually. And uh, what are the genes you're actually looking at? I mean, we all have so many different genes and uh, so which are the ones you really focus on? They're very different in pharmacogenetics too. In principle, every gene which is involved in drug action can be a pharmacogenetic important gene. But generally, most important are drug metabolism genes because if they are uh, inactive, they're inactive for a couple of drugs. So this is already a factor influencing many drug therapies in a patient. Okay, but we'll still be using the same sort of medication. There will not be a just like an infinite amount of different substances in the future. Probably not. If you ask the industry, this will be too yeah. expensive, but we can um, dose the medications we have according to the needs of the patients. And what about pharma industry? I mean, not that I'm too worried about their profits, but they actually look at blockbusters. Medication they can sell to as many patients as possible. Isn't individualized medicine just the opposite? Well, it has come more um, familiar for the pharma industry because they, l they lost uh, a lot of drugs uh, which were taken from the market because of side effects. And these side effects occurred only in some single patients. And if they had known that these single patients would not tolerate the drug, they would be happy and they could uh, s make their drugs more effective and safer okay. in subpopulations. So they're actually welcoming. The, the well, medicine. they start to, of course, traditionally they are posted and uh, their drug helps everybody, but they're learning that uh, actually we differ and there are different patient mm. groups who will not respond in the same way. And if we look at other countries, poorer countries, who do not have sufficient medication at all, I mean, isn't that just like a luxurious problem we have here in the West? Well, so far they have any medications. It would be important to make the medication as effective as possible. And thereby, there are also studies ongoing on um, HIV treatment and on uh, tuberculosis treatment where we use pharmacogenetic tests in order to assure the same efficiency in all patients. Thanks a lot for the talk, Julia Thank Kirchner. You.